as I'm sure most of you are aware, if you've been keeping abreast of what's happening on social media and you're a fan of hip hop, you would have known that um, Juice World unfortunately passed away last night, man. Juice World, uh, a very influential rapper in the kind of emo rap SoundCloud era, has passed away. One of the maybe leading artists in that genre, somebody who had a lot of potential ahead of him, somebody who was collaborating with everyone under the sun and really making some hit records and really showing his range. Somebody who recently had uh, did a, one of my favorite collaboration projects, uh, the tape he did with um, with Future was really good. And um, I just enjoyed his music overall. I thought he was one of the most talented ones of, of his group. I thought, like I said before, he had a lot of potential. He had a lot of range. I thought his live shows could have been really pushed to the further outer limits because he had a pretty decent singing voice for somebody that predominantly was concentrating on rapping. Um, his influences were quite wide and varying. And just generally came across as a bit of a good egg. Came across like he had a lot of, um, he had a lot of give, lot to give in terms of artistry. But unfortunately, uh, he died. Um, now the com- what the cause of it has been said seizures, but we don't know what the. There's no toxicology report yet, so we don't know exactly what happened. And I guess at now this moment in time, it's probably not. Those, it's not super important. I think. I think it's just cool to remember him, in his legacy. But yeah, man, I'm bummed, man. I can't lie, I'm super bummed out. But only because um, I think is it is it Juice World is it Juice Juice World against the world the one with um him and Future. Because I listen to it all the time, man. You know, it's just one mixtape I listen to every time I run. I sort of just have it on shuffle when I'm running outside and stuff. And uh, Future and and Juice World against what well, World well on Drugs in it, yeah. Of course, you know. Now it's a bit. It's a bit uh, prophetic, everything that's been said in that album. And, it, you know, I think if you're a fan of Juice World and you really pay attention to his lyrics, especially the mixtape that came out last year, Goodbye and Good Riddance, you know that a lot of maybe the first, maybe I'd say 10 tracks on this mixtape are essentially, you know, him basically crying out for help. That album there has got on the screen, Good Luck and Good Riddance, is probably, um, yeah, man, I don't know what to say. I've got nothing really insightful to say. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Juice World. Um, I've followed his whole career basically from the onset since he kind of came onto my radar watched essentially all his interviews big fan of his freestyles and yeah i've just bummed out man i really am bummed out i can't really have any i don't really have anything constructive to say nothing insightful i'm just sad that an artist that i really looked up to and somebody that i was in you know looking forward to seeing how he evolved has passed away and if you look at it you know if you inspect a bit closer you'd say you know the mount rushmore of emo rappers you know the free probably the three rappers who are probably pushing it the furthest and really showing their musical range and really kind of setting the trends um, sonically, stylistically, were Lil Peep, XXX and Tastion. And now um, Juice World have all passed away at ridiculously young ages. Um, I just wish it could have been avoided, you know? I don't think now is also the time to come out with all those anti-drug you know PSAs and stuff because we know people are going to do what they have to do in life and I think if you follow Juice World, you know that a lot of his um quote-unquote drug issues weren't necessarily due to the fame he came into music having those um issues you know plaguing his life beforehand it wasn't like some of these kids now who kind of get famous get some money and then start exploring drugs um he was doing this beforehand so maybe the access to them maybe increased but he was do- he was going through stuff in it himself personally and I think we saw that a bit of his... I don't even want to speculate on this stuff. It's not the time. Um, but yeah, you if, if you're a fan, you know what, what was going on in his life. And you know what he had to deal with. And you know what he was trying to battle through. And yeah, man, I just miss the guy, man. I miss him already. Um, I find it really difficult, though. Because this is the thing. I, I followed... I was a big fan of X. I was a big fan of... I'm still a big fan of X. Still a big fan of Lil Peep. And I've you know, listened to the entire catalogue back and back and back to front, front to back. But I find it really difficult to listen to these guys once they pass away, man. I just can't bear to hear their voice. And I just can't imagine what it must feel like if you're their fam- if you're a close friend or family member, what it must feel like to hear their music played out. It's obviously cool tribute, and I think it's great to see people streaming so loads of Juice World stuff and you know getting his streaming numbers up and hopefully helping his family and all his loved ones to make sure they don't have to work again. But I just can't bear listening to them again, you know? I think of the Barbell Buddha from um, the CrossFit world, who was a, a podcaster that I followed for a long time, who unfortunately passed away, I think, in 2016 from a 
heart complications and stuff and i haven't listened to his podcast ever again but he was somebody i looked up to somebody i kind of framed my solo podcast around the stuff that he was doing and he had a really good philosophy on life he was going and he was he was doing some interesting things before he passed away it's always like that anyway it always seems as if the person that passed away is i guess maybe it happens in your later years maybe you know you get to a point in life where you've achieved a lot and people have enjoyed your artistry and they've kind of been able to enjoy your full range and then when you do end up passing it's so like you know okay cool he he lived a good life he or she lived a good life but some of these artists like it always seems to be their life gets cut short just as they're about to like you know really go for the jugular and you just felt as if juice world was gonna you know start 2020 off with a bang you know but unfortunately we won't be able to see that but i don't know he seemed like somebody who was you know recording a lot and putting a lot of effort into making sure he turned over loads of music so i won't be surprised if we get a full project sometime very soon because he just had so much stuff in the cat in his kind of archive he was, you know a prodigious recorder somebody akin to like a future or like a young folk who just records and records and records so i think we're gonna probably see that sometime soon but yeah man, i'm just bummed out in it i'm just bummed out i got nothing intelligent to say at all um the story appeared on tmz the other day <clears throat> so yesterday let me quickly read that and then we can kind of move on but juice world dead at 21 final moments captured um it says the following uh, footage appears of what you should it should be Juice World's final moments in the air and finally on the ground starting to surface and the rappers seem to be in good spirits. I'm not going to click that video. Um, another video here showing him in a, a private plane with his friends. Everything seemed to be going okay. A second video appears to show a crew landing at Chicago's Midway Airport, which would mark um, Juice World's actual last moments on this earth. Um, in the clip, you see him hanging out <coughs> with one of the buds at the back, apparently fully conscious and alert. As they look at something together, possibly a phone. Soon afterward, it would suffer a seizure and later die at the hospital. One of Juice World's songs, "Too Soon" EP, was called "Legends," and it's a project, pr pretty prophetic lyric. As he said, the track was about little people and existential death. In this song, he raps, "What's the Twenty Seven Club? We ain't making it past Twenty One." And I guess it's something a lot of people have been saying a lot, right? Speaking stuff into existence. I'm not for. I'm not really for the woo woo stuff at this moment. I think it's a bit too raw to even talk about that sort of stuff, but. If there is any lessons to be learned, it is maybe to like... But I guess in, in general, a lot of this generation... I look at someone like an Ian Connor is a good example. You know, they, they love a good last... I think it's a weird kind of flex. Like everyone's trying to say something prophetic in their tweet so that if they do pass away, they have some um, epic memory to like, you know, hold them at as opposed to like somebody retweeting some girl getting their head cracked open in the side of a curb, you know, on the street fight. No one wants that. So maybe that's the point of it, but... By and large, you know, I tend to be the kind of person that does avoid negative speak just because what's the point, right? Life is negative enough. I don't need to reinforce it by saying crazy stuff. But also, I don't know, man. These guys are living life at 100 miles per hour, innit? Maybe life does seem a bit fleeting to them. You know, one moment you're sleeping on a on an air mattress somewhere on the floor in the middle of some nowhere town in America. Next moment, you're on a jet ski somewhere, you know, with a Instagram foot listening to your song on blast i get life can change really quick and it can just seem so weird to them but i'm just not somebody that speaks negatively about anything even my own life even with other people i just try to keep it a bit neutral because i just know the power of the words but i don't know man i don't know how much to read into all that stuff but yeah move on to the article um the song and ep was released in 2019 to 2000 june 2000 june 11 june 19 2018 the day after x was murdered um they've got a couple of tweets here from Lil Nas X and Camila Cabello saying good stuff and yeah man talented artists I'm sure you guys are aware of lucid dreams and yeah I've got nothing more to say man really I think it's just it's just sad just a sad state of events and yeah I can just thoughts and feelings go out to his friends and family who have you know probably lost a very integral person in their crew you seem like a really good fun hang Somebody that was, of course, insanely talented and, you know, the world was really his oyster. He had so much potential, so much untapped potential, really. And, you know, again, like I said, it's not time for drug PSAs and all that stuff. Let people grieve and then we can talk about it another day. But, yeah, RIP Juice Ward, man. Gone but not forgotten. Gone but not forgotten. Um, 